Greetings, brothers and sisters from the four corners of the world. I hope everyone is having a blessed morning, day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in your perspective lands. All right. So part two of Feast of a Car. All right. So in the first portion, we talked about those down the groundwork. Okay, laying down the foundation to the kingdom of heaven, okay, so to speak, as you see in the picture to the right, it's about a straight and narrow path, okay, as you look up to the top, the two gates into something beautiful, right? Now, for this lesson, for this part, it's called the temple and the storehouse the temple and the storehouse now i want to show you all something in the book of established righteousness okay also part of the books of remembrance more so like a a, a study text to show all the things but so it reads here, the celebration of a car. The celebration of a car occurs on the 74th day of summer and falls on the Sabbath day. The story of the origin of this holy day is Enoch 11, 80 through 92. And the description for the day is in the 13. Enoch 13, 130 to 134. It is a day we eat with Enoch, said this holy day is the day where we bless the Lord's provision for us for the year. Now we went over the term provision. It's not just food, right? So keep in mind, it's blessing the Lord's provision for the year. It says, this is the day we bless the storehouse and Anoxed's provisions for us and our food and all that he gives us. We keep this holy day to comfort God. We have a very similar situation and the same kind of need as in a car's day. We have the same need for provision and he has the same need for comfort. This joins the hearts of the righteous to the hearts of the Irkadeshi by plowing and planting. Rehearse stories, repentance abounds. The children are also supposed to sing songs of praise. Preparation is definitely needed ahead of time. Now, for this lesson, you got it right. We're going to see what the storehouse is all about about not just physically but spiritually and not just spiritually but physically as well and i know you say why would i say the two you'll understand as we move further brothers and sisters okay so i wanted to share this is what the feast of a car is all about and remember this is important on your off time to go, but I told you that the beginning of the Feast of a Car was all about planting, okay, and plowing, being that husbandman, being that farmer, okay, being those who till the ground and work for others so that everyone can prosper. So, really quickly. Now you saw that in Genesis 9 and 20. You saw that we did use this scripture in the previous lesson. And I want you to understand something. Now Noah began to be an husbandman and he planted the vineyard. Now this doesn't make much sense if you actually understand what is being said now the average person oh 
these are three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted the vineyard. So wait a minute. He has three sons, the whole earth overspread. His son spreading out into different locations. He's planting, and, and all of a sudden, he drinks wine and is discovered by him. Okay, something's wrong here. But nonetheless, we're going to focus on verse 20. So let's look at these root words. Now, it says, Noah began to be an husbandman. So I've shared with you already before that they give the understanding of husbandman as soil and then the broken down word husbandman or hus husbandry and land which is incorrect because when we go to H420, excuse me, when we go to H406, we get a car, which means straight out to dig a farmer, husbandman, plowman. Now, let's take a look. It says, Noah began to be a husbandman. So he started to dig, he started to farm, he started to be a plowman. Let's look at this word, husbandman. Now it does say the head of the family, it says a farmer, a tiller of the soil, and then it says a farmer, all right? Let's look at the other term, plow. Now plow, referring to what? Going through things, okay? Going through, going through, okay, tilling the ground. All right. Can't even show you farmer. It'll go bring us back to the root word farm. Right. And they give they give this one, you know, which is quite strange as to why they changed it, but we understand what it is today. Okay. As you can see. <clears throat> it's a tract of leased land, cultivated land, okay? all things that pertain to actually working and tilling. Now it says he planted, so he began to be an husbandman, and he planted. So let's look at this word to plant. It says a young tree, herb newly planted, sprout shoot to level the earth. Any small vegetable life, vegetation generally. Now it says put or set in the ground. So now when we read here where it says this joins the hearts of the righteous to the hearts of the air Kadeshi by plowing and planting. We see that it is hidden in scripture that Noah was celebrating the feast of a car. Okay. And he planted a vineyard. He planted a vineyard and so in this term it's referring to garden okay that's what he planted now moving on to the next scripture the book of ancient grandmothers chapter 12 
this is going to be chapter 12, verse 105. So we'll read from 105 to 107. It says, and it reads, And the Lord said, Now understand that before the flood, the righteous and the wicked were separate and developed independently from one another. But now, during the long duration of the earth, they will be blended together in all their living. So the divisions of the earth accomplished by your old fathers and the joinings brought into being by your old mothers, both being strongly undergirded by the gentle guidances of an ox that have given birth to a human social conscience. And it was those without conscience that were destroyed in the flood. And in the same manner, when the world is filled once again with the living dead in the end of days, the wicked will be destroyed by fire. And the Lord continued to speak with Noah as they both sat together upon the earth. And the Lord said, the masters of Seku did not want the lives of the people to be focused on their family and friends. But they wanted their lives to be focused on them. And they did not want them to find fulfillment in living out their visions of created purpose, but they wanted all those who they aid or compel to support them, to live their lives for them and for all their successes to benefit themselves as masters. So they rose up determined to destroy the order set in place, which is called the gift of life. And instead, they set in place all the division of days emanating from the world of sorcerers and vile idolaters and those who work in darkness. And they changed the Sabbath days and named their days after pagan gods and the months of the years also and their memorable their memorable their memorable days are filled with drunkenness and fornications and they spill the blood in infants and the innocent and in this way the gift of life of the people languishes and so there's a little sneak peek to part three, brothers and sisters. We will be going into the division of days. The division of days. Okay. The division of days and the seven divisions. And how it pertains to the feast of a car. Now, please understand, this was the Most High in Christ talking to Noah. Okay, this was him talking to Noah. Now, imagine all the things that happened, and he's saying, Hey, I want you to understand. I want you to understand all the evils that was going on even though you didn't see and why i did what i did so it was all about removing people's focus from family and friends and what is the feast of a car about family and friends building new understandings building new relationships right also Helping people learn and get a better understanding of their vision of created purpose. Brothers and sisters, during during the time of the you know what, I think everyone should recognize that you should have been learning how to define your talents, 
a lot of people have defined hobbies, not necessarily talents. Okay. And so that was the last time that was more like a mercy chance from the most high. Now, brothers and sisters, we're heading into 2024 and it is going to be horrible. I repeat, <laughs> it's going to be a very terrible time moving forward from the fall on to 2024. Okay. Now, I wanted to share with you as Noah was a husbandman and he was preparing during these times, and you'll see this in the part three, you'll understand the division of days was being talked to and shown again and again to Noah. The division of days is a part of keeping these holy days, okay, of Shabua. It's also about knowing how to help us sort of rationalize the holy days and assess things properly and how they can help us prepare. So do not think that when we go into these holy day lessons, they're just a holy day. They're a holy day, but with the emphasis of helping brothers and sisters get ready for what? It said, living when the world is filled once again with the living dead in the end of days. So it's to teach us how to live amongst dead people in the end of days. That's what we're doing today. So with that being said, let's get right in to the scriptures. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 16 through 20. And it reads, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. No, let no man deceive himself if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he and continuing, it says for the will wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Now, why am I mentioning this? You're seeing the word. Okay, he's talking about temple. He's talking about the storehouse. So let's look at this word, temple, right? Let's go. Now, Let's better yet do it this way. We'll go into the Old Testament. Prefer to do it that way. Take by random the word temple. Now, the word temple meant a capacity, a large building, a palace, a temple, a place. Now, I'm going to bring up everything possible. Now it goes to the root word to be able, can, could, may, might, be able, any at all, all always, 
could endure power. These are terms that was used. Now, the word temple, we know people say, oh, they worship a deity. That's what the term people say a temple was. But within scripture, the temple is our body, right? This is what scripture tells us. Now, let's go back to the scripture, and I want you to see how deep this is. Many people, you know, brush the scripture lightly. It says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Now let's look at that word temple. It's a building for worship. Okay. Edifice dedicated to the service. Okay. We're going to say of the most high. It says templum, piece of ground consecrated for the ta for the taking of auspices, building for worship. Okay, a place reserved. So now you have to understand what our body is supposed to be a reserved space. I want you, and you're gonna understand as we move forward why, what happens within our body when we don't defile it. You're gonna understand that today. So our body is the place of worship. It's the first place of worship. It's your mind, it's your thoughts. It's your attitude. It's your behavior. Now, you don't believe me? Well, the, if you, yeah, now you have to understand the term defile. Defile means to desecrate, profane, excuse me, to make foul or dirty, okay? To trample down, to violate, to ill treat, to dishonor to tread, to stamp on it, become foul. So now, how you treat your vessel is a direct indication to how you feel about the Most High and the Holy Spirit, because we're created in their image. Oh, wow. Now, that's without the, you know, GMOs and the frankincense, you know, science that they do to the world's food. But your every day, you know, a little squat, every day, a little, little push-ups, a little, little crunches, little sit-ups or something, you know, jumping jacks or something. Not too hard, can keep the body good. Now, within scripture, now I'm just talking about the physical sense, right? Now, the Most High says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Now, let's look at this word, holy. It means consecrated, sacred godly, ecclesiastical. And if you didn't understand what ecclesiastical comes, it comes from Ecclesiastes. And it says, it's referring to relating to the church. That would be what? The body of Christ. How you treat your body, how you treat your mind, how your attitude is, is how you treat other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. You don't believe me? Here. It also says holy, 
all right, whole, uninjured, it says health. So health is connected to holy, man, listen, health is connected to holiness. It says, see health, health, happiness, and good, we're going to say tidings, because luck is a, is a short extension of luxifer. Okay, it used to, without the K, it used to be lux, loose, or lux. All right. So holiness is connected to your health. Now you remember, watch this. Let's see if I can pull this up, most high willing. We still have it. Let's see. Please bear with me. I wanna wanna share something. Let's see. Give me a second. Give me a second, please. One moment. Thank you for your patience in that pause. Now, remember now, okay, brothers and sisters, I'm gonna try and put it all three together, okay? Let's do it this way, just for right now. <clears throat> now, remember that in the Gospel of the Nazarenes, Christ said in verse 14 here, ye shall eat fruits and herbs of the earth and working in the law, live long in the land and ye shall not, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Verse 13, excuse me. Ye shall not eat the flesh nor drink the blood of any slaughtered creature nor yet anything which brings disorder to your health or senses. So being holy is a part of being healthy. Now, does that mean everyone who is healthy is holy? No. Do you not see all these influencers uh, who are dying, right? Wasn't it uh, just, a? Uh, I think this week, the, the, the so-called vegan woman, you know, who, who she, she collapsed and passed out. Skinniest thing you ever seen. So-called healthy, did you see the, I think it was a Chechen man or the Russian uh, man who, who, I mean, dude was strong, dude was strong, but he died, heart attack, just because now you can be strong all day long, you can be healthy all day long, if you don't have the most high, you're still not holy, right? So. Don't don't get it confused with, oh, someone's in shape and they're holy. No. They can also be brought down as well because the temple, the temple is a part of holiness. That's what the scriptures are saying. This, this is saying the temple of God is holy, which means your body, how you treat it is holy. This is what Christ said, how you treat it is holy. Okay. So don't do anything that brings disorder, sickness, you know, pain and suffering to your body. And uh, the, the evil powers that be, they do this, right, with the food. But we can control at least, you know, in our home, 10, 20 push-ups, right? We can control, you know, 30, 40, you know, sit-ups. 
You know, you can control doing 100 jumping jacks. I mean, you can do these things. Now, that's on the physical. Now, biblically, spiritually, the scripture now says, let no man deceive himself. And then, you know, I'm paraphrasing because I'm not reading the whole thing, but it's referring to people who think they're wise. So now you can also defile your temple by your thoughts. Say what? Let no man deceive himself. That means your thoughts can send you into a spiral of chaos. I always tell people this, don't, don't do it. Don't think on your own. Stop thinking. Ask the minister, pray fast. Hey, <laughs> people are going to have a reality shock because people may not like that I say, hey, don't, don't think on your own. Ask the minister. But I know what I'm getting judged on. Do you know what you're getting judged on? Because minister is supposed to answer questions of the people right if the people don't ask questions now you also got to get judged and say well i thought my scriptures said lean not into thy own understanding so now you're thinking you're wise on your own instead of receiving counsel of people who have set up to do this job right so what you think can destroy you what you think can destroy you so it's now it's not just food it's thoughts hmm let's check out this word deceive deceive Mislead false appearance or statement to deceive, to take in, beguile, to cheat. If the devil tells you and puts it in your mind that you can take shortcuts, well, that's cheating. All right. Let's take out, let's check out this word also. Seemeth. It's going to bring us to seem. Let's see. I wanna I wanna show y'all something. Now, as you can see, this word seemeth means to think by implication to seem truthfully or uncertain. So if you're going upon things and you're uncertain, you are deceiving yourself. If you are making decisions based on uncertainty, you are deceiving yourself. Now you're defiling the temple of God because your, 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 your counsel is not found on what's correct. I tell people this all the time. Look what it says. That word, if a man among you seemeth to be wise, it means if a man among you thinks to be intelligent, if he seems to be intelligent, if he of his own pleasure seems to think like he's got it going, well, he's a lie. <laughs> and the Most High humbles these kinds of people. That's why people may say, oh, well, you're saying, you know, this, but I'm trying to help you. Look at the word seem. Now, seemeth, come, root word is seem. If any man among you seemeth to be wise. Seem means it appears that something is so. It appears to be in some condition. I don't want to seem like I'm doing well. I want to be doing well, right? Seem also means to appear to oneself, to think oneself. Hmm. Now, people who 
you know who thinks themselves to be wise let's get this word as well wise right wise is learned sagacious sane prudent discreet experience having the power of discerning and judging wisely this is what the most i say if someone thinks they can judge wisely if they can do these things wisely well let me prove them wrong you must come through the righteous chain of command this is what paul is saying if that was the case then there would be no body of christ if everyone was wise right so therefore you don't know how to discern you don't know how to judge properly if you do not adjust your health adjust your mindset into what the most high wants and you may say why what y'all gonna see how this all goes into the storehouse okay now also look at now that was the the term wise for adjective now look at the term for no, uh, noun it says fashion custom habit so your habits also make you unholy temples if you have bad habits bad manners if you're in a bad condition that makes you in a vulnerable state for the devil because now you're a temple with no spirit within it okay and we don't want that do we Once I read to you all these things in the beautiful books of remembrance, you're going to be like, oh, I need my temple to remain holy. Because without the Holy Spirit, how can how can your temple be holy if something that's supposed to be holy is not in it? Think about that, right? Our temple only becomes holy with the Holy Spirit. Once the Holy Spirit is gone, the temple is no longer holy, right? Come on now. <laughs> All right. It says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Now, many, many people don't understand this, and I'm sharing this because I don't want no one to fall to this okay craftiness means delude okay it goes into the word fox y'all see it craftiness fox like wild craftiness so it says foxery was known for wiliness trickery deceit to play the fox, to deceive craftiness, wiles, or deceits. Let's look at this word really quickly. Williness. Willy means wile. See that? Same as fox. Now let's go to that word dilute. Dilute means to deceive, impose upon, mislead the mind or just. So if you think you got it going on and you're always going to your own thoughts, the Most High will allow you, it will allow those negative thoughts to mislead your mind and judgment. Isn't this dangerous? This is very dangerous. That What is that called, brothers and sisters? You see it. It's called, and it says, down to one's detriment. So the Most High, if you believe you are wise without the structure of the Most High, Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Most High will allow you to go down to your own detriment. He will allow the act of misleading you to occur which means a delusion. A delusion doesn't mean in believing something that's not there. It means being led by your own thoughts. 
see that it says the delusion is a mental derangement a false impression or belief of a fixed nature what is fixed you believing what you want to believe this is why i've always told people your opinions suck they mean nothing opinions is what will carry you into these strong delusions as second thessalonians tells us okay remember pride will allow you to be will allow you to mislead your mind and of judgment saying this about someone or saying that or not accepting correction or not not wanting to appreciate things yeah that's a form of delusion we see this in the world today brothers and sisters as the world is spiraling y'all see it come on now it's scary how fast the world is in we're here in the feast of a car coming up and it's almost what they would call september the year is already halfway over it was just a blink of an eye brothers and sisters these delusions hey all these things that we have wrong with our temples brothers and sisters when that confirmation comes you want to make sure you have minimal to none. Okay. You want to make sure you have minimal to none. All right. First Corinthians chapter six. This is 16 through uh, the chapter six, verse 17 through 20. Excuse me. Now it reads, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I'm going to read that again. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One more time. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Hmm. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you, brothers and sisters? Joined to the Most High. Joined to Christ. Now, let's look at this word. They say uh, adjunct also means join. United with another in office or action. Closely connected. How many people think that Christ is closely connected to them, but Christ is not? So we have to be what? He that is joined unto the Lord is of one spirit. Now look at this word join. Join means to unite things into a whole. That means if the way you think, Christ should be thinking. If Christ ain't going to think the way you think, we, 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 we ain't rocking with that one spirit. We need to get there. Okay. It says combine, put or bring together. I mention this all the time. Brothers and sisters, we all come from different walks of life. But like I said, I don't care if you're in the Fijis. I don't care if you're in Hawaii. I don't care if you in, you know, uh, Nova Scotia. I don't care if you in uh, uh, Tibet. I don't care if you in in in, in Bangladesh. <laughs> I, I, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're in Madagascar. If you are with Christ and you are joined with Christ, when we meet up together in righteousness, brothers and sisters we will join as if it was a key and a lock we'll join beautifully together that's how us believers are supposed to be 
you join in with Christ, you understand you can join in with others who are in Christ. It says join, connect, unite, join together, unite, yoke. And we know the term yoke for working hard, right? So we can do this work in the ministry together. That is what it means to join. Okay. It says in verse In verse 18, it says, flee fornication. Now, this is not just physical fornication. This is also spiritual fornication, okay? But it says, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Which have, which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own, for ye are brought bought with a price. For ye are brought for excuse me, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now let's. Let's look at this term. It tells us to glorify the Most High in our body and our spirit. Let's look at this word. Let's take a look. Glorify means to praise, honor, extol, extol, vaunt, be proud of. All right. Renown, praise him. Now look at the look at another word that goes into glorify, admission to heaven, exaltation. So I want you to ask yourself, can my current body and mind be admitted into the kingdom? You see the definition right there. Can my current body and mind be admitted into the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. That's tough, isn't it? So being the temple of the Holy Spirit is a big deal, isn't it? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9. Going to verse 13, reads, Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? They which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Now, a lot of people don't understand what this means. Yes, it is referring to ministers. I did read this yesterday in the previous lesson. So here Paul is saying, do you understand that the ministers, they wait at the altar. They are partakers of the altar. Now you may say, but Paul didn't translate. Well, Enoch and Elijah did. Mm -hmm. And then we see the transfiguration on the mountain with Moses. Right? Say the prophets didn't. Abraham didn't. Jacob didn't. So what does it mean? Partakers with the altar. Hmm. First, let's go into that word altar. Hmm. 
Now it says a place of sacrifice. Let's see. The altar is high altar, altered for sacrifice. Also meant burnt offerings, also means to worship, to offer sacrifice. All right. Now, and then you can see here it says mensa, mensa. All right. In Latin, mensa literally meant table, also a meal and supper. And the altar is referred to as a table with the most high. Hmm, that's why it says you can't sit at the table of the most high and of devils. So what is this saying? Spiritually, the ministers partake of holy things. And spiritually, the ministers are partakers of the holy altar in the kingdom. I'm going to show you. And you have the opportunity to do the same thing as well. Not just the ministers, but in order to get there, guess what? You need to be taught by someone who is there, right? Because you can't get somewhere. Let's say, hey, and you know what's crazy? In the world, they have made maps for everything. Yes, they have made study guides. They have made maps. They even have GPS in the world, right? Satellite systems, all that. But no one can give you a map to get to the kingdom. Have you noticed that? But the ministers can. But had you, if you're always thinking about doing things on your own, then you're going to fail. Now, why would I be bringing this about? Brothers and sisters, the Feast of a Car was about what? New understandings, right? Understanding ourselves, understanding other brothers and sisters, learning new things about the angels, how they help us and how they pertain to us and how they help us become better, right? Even the Holy Spirit, this is a big this is a very, very, very important holy day with the Holy Spirit. It's very massive. I'm going to show you. But I must lay the small groundwork, so to speak. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. And what's sad is I really feel like a lot of people are sleeping on this lesson, but hey, you know what? It's there for who wants the who wants the the meat, right? We don't we don't have time for milk, right? There was a time where I was afraid to give people everything. It's like I prayed to fast and most high said, well, we don't get time for, for milk. Everyone gotta get meat. Now remember. <laughs> Not all meat is good. You may get you may get a little piece of meat. You may get a whole meal. You 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 may get you know you may bite too much more than you're able to handle. But you know with moderation, right? And you need to you know have moderation and know what's the most important. Now, Acts chapter two. Verse 42 to 47 reads, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. So remember what minister taught you what breaking bread was. That's actually a part of the doctrine of Christ, by the way, but moving forward. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things common. If you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, you understand in that this is actually a law. It's called all things common. Here's what it means. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men 
as every man had need. Who would have thought the Dead Sea Scrolls is in the scriptures? That means everyone in the church sold everything of theirs. And if someone didn't have food, everyone was pitching in. If someone missed a payment on someone, on something, everyone was pitching in. It had even gone into the gospel of the Nazarenes. Someone's house, uh, I think it was someone's house, was was uh, was broken down. It fell apart, and they would all go. The whole congregation would all go and build that house back up so that one brother or sister wouldn't be charged. So how beautiful is that? It says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the temple and the Lord with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So understand when we start getting back into these ways of the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and not even the Dead Sea Scrolls, this is the doctrine of the apostles that came literally from Christ. Once we start operating in these things, what happens? The Most High adds to those churches consistently more and more and more and more because now we're walking in one accord as a temple so there's an individual temple you sisters you brothers everyone and then there's a temple as a collective effort which is called the body of christ we are that temple and we are supposed to can you imagine a world a church a body where everyone just shared all things in common now in terms a lot of people would think that sounds like a cult now you have to understand when things are done for christ by christ and in christ it will always be led in righteousness it will always flow righteously when it's for christ by christ in Christ and through Christ, you cannot go wrong. All those others, none of them were of Christ, all those cults and stuff, okay? But it, it, it's some strong delusions, brothers and sisters, how people twist scriptures, how Satan twists scriptures to deceive people. But can you imagine everyone in a church having the same exact home? Because everyone said, we're not going to live in a home until all of us do. Man, listen. We, we, we would be unstoppable as believers, right? And say, hey, you know, Sister Mary, you know, her husband just passed away. Everyone, you know what? She was a widow. Who wants to take her in? Call your family. The whole congregations raise their hand. How beautiful would that be? Rather than say, oh, well, she's on her own now. I don't know what she's going to do. Right? This is the beginning of the temple in the storehouse, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> okay, this is the beginning. Proverbs 3, 5 through 10. You know, I had to bring it out. It's my favorite scripture. If anyone ever came to me and said, Mr. Shah, what, what's your favorite scripture? This is the one. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and not lean unto thy own understandings. This is my favorite. Why? Because us as sinners, you know what? And then coming to the most high living in righteousness, 
it is our duty to say, I am so sick and tired of doing it myself. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. And so we lean not into our own understanding. We're also acknowledging most high. Uh, there's, there's no one greater than you. It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Like, I want the Most High to tell me, hey, you know, Most High, Holy Spirit, what, what exercise should I do today? Should I go running? Should I work out? You know, should I go left? Should I go right? How should I go to this place? You know, should I catch the bus, the jobs, whatever, taxi, right? That's me. It says, be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. This is sad because we live in a world where so many people think that they are wise. And I get it at some point because, you know, you you see some truth and then you think, oh, look what I found out. And now all of a sudden people are wise. But you know what wise is? Let's 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 go back to these root words, right? I want you to evaluate wise. Wise means learned, experienced. This is the type of people I want around me. You want to know the type of wise people? People who are experienced and succeeding in trials and tribulations or people who have learned from their trials and tribulations. Those are wise people. People who understand that every time they make their own decisions, they always come short. These are wise people. People who know that there's nothing good on this earth the only thing good in our lives is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of heaven, and all righteous brothers and sisters striving to get into the kingdom. Those are the wise people. Wise is, is saying, well, I'm not going to do something without my Father in heaven approval without his stamp on it without christ's stamp on it without the holy spirit's stamp on it hmm. if they will come and stamp and, and give me a sign or answer me in prayer and say this is what will be done i'll do it those are the wise people it says be not wise in your own heart fear the lord and depart from evil it shall be it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy pressers shall be burst shall burst out with new wine now you are wondering what does any of this have to do with storehouse, right? You see, when we read the established book of righteousness, it said, what? This is a day we bless the storehouse. And you're like, what, what, what is a storehouse? Well, here you go. Storehouse is A storehouse is a treasury, a storehouse, something laid up, repository, collection. Hmm? All right? It can say magazine. Now, not you think, you know, some people think a magazine as a gun or, or a piece of like paper. No. Okay. Now, let's look at this word barn this word barn 
says Assam. Look what that says, to heap up together a storehouse. Brothers and sisters, a barn is a storehouse. And I will show you, I don't, I don't want to spoil a alert, but, you know, remember when Christ said, you know, I'll gather my wheat in the barn. He's saying, I'll gather you in my storehouse. Feast of a car. <laughs> right? He's, all the prophecies are highly connected to the true holy days. But does anyone pay attention? I think not. Many people don't. Assam, that's H618. That's a storehouse. You see it right there. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Now, let's check out this word barn. As we know, covered building for the storage of farm produce. Now, now wait a minute. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled, so shall thy storehouses be filled. So as long as you honor the Most High with what he's given you, talents and your fruits, he will make sure that you have a barn, a covering for your things. You, you, you tracking so far? Okay. Hopefully you are. All right. Good, good. Now, let's bring it to Psalms 33. Psalms 33, 1 through 7 reads, it says, Rejoice in the Lord. O ye righteous, for praise is calmly, for the upright praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the falstery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillful with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. I want you to understand what David is saying here. He is saying that the Most High loves when you learn new talents, by the way. But anywho, he loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together. As in heap, he layeth up the depth in storehouses, let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught, he maketh the devices of the people of none effect. So understand that this storehouse. It's not just used for food. I, I want to bring that back to you, okay? Please take a very careful look. So it says barns. We're going to highlight, okay? Barns. It says treasures, okay? It says store chambers, okay? Let's keep going. Look at this barn. Okay, so you see where it's in the scripture? 
it says when you see barn, that's it. A receptacle for provisions, right? That's it. A modern matermat, mabus, a granary, mishkina, a magazine, a store city, a closet. Let, let's highlight these for y'all so y'all can keep track of them. A closet. It says Joseph built storehouses in Egypt. which he laid up a super abundance of corn against the years of dearth. Hmm. Also says granary. Now, let's check out that term granary. Means grain, right? Root word grain. Grain storehouses. What are What is the world going through right now? They're withholding rice and grain everywhere. What did Russia, what did Putin just sign a deal with? Giving six countries in Africa free grain and rice. It looked like the Most High is about to bless Africa. That's what it looked like. Doesn't mean they're, they're doing right, but he's going to make sure the right people get what is right for them, right? Hmm. So now we're starting to see, it's not just all about food, is it? It's not just all about food, provisions, something laid up, treasures it gives magazine so a storehouse is also known as a warehouse placing for storing goods it says also ammunition warehouse depot stores it says to store up Now, brothers and sisters, as the world is getting treacherous by the second, you're sitting there wondering, oh, praise the knock said he's going to get us right. But please do understand, you cannot live by bread alone. You must live with the Holy Spirit dwelling inside your temple, which brings me to an excited point of sharing, remember the storehouse, of sharing the book of Machelzec chapter four. The Book of Machel does like chapter 4, verse 31 to 30. And it reads, And now arising out of the conditions that brought the first conditions of death into the temporal world, where the conditions that would lead to the second decision and the first great sevening, and from this time forward, it is the view of the Air Kadeshi that Bad, who was known as Satan or some Jaza, and his hosts are the authors of the sounds of death. If you haven't watched my New Heaven and New Earth lessons, we talk about the great sevenings and the sounds of life and death. Verse 32, and with all this, a new and amazing change began to emerge. So there's a change in the air. 
from the first great seven. And among the children of men, you will see that it will turn out to be foundational to the power of all the forces of evil throughout all the course of the earth. For it can be seen that those of the children of Yatsikad, who was Adam, whose spirits were joined with the presence of Anoxid and the Air Kadeshi. Hmm. Now, how do how is the time? How do we join ourselves with the Air Kadeshi? You see that footnote? It says Shabuah. That's the alliance of heaven. Where the ones who remained with their family and Nod, and they were the ones who put an effort into knowing them and communing with them and walking with them, and they thought only upon using them according to the spirit of life that had been put into them. And as a result, they had the exact same view of sounds as the air Kadeshi. And it came to pass that the people multiplied and there began to be those who did not put the effort into knowing the Lord or Anoxic. And the original virtues began to wane, and with it, a new subtility began to be shown, and it was the desire to be satisfied. So what does that mean? When you have a minister like myself who sits there and says, well, don't come to my congregation if you're not going to show excitement. If you're not going to put the work in, the effort, if you're not going to be down to to do all things that Christ and the Most High and the Holy Spirit says, if you're not trying to understand them better, then what are you doing? Because what will happen is that that feeling will be replaced with now, well, it's no longer my job to satisfy the Most High. I must satisfy myself. That's where one spirit moves and the next comes in. Does that make sense? So selfishness. And you see this really in the Christian churches, right? No one wants to know Christ or the Most High. They just want to accept that he died for their sins, right? They don't want to know who he is. They don't want to know how he feels. They don't care how he feels, right? And so they're all selfish, <laughs> right? That's why they don't read the Gospels. And those who were close to the Lord and creation were happily attached to the circumstances of their lives and all that occurred. And thus they lived in a culture of happiness with their father and complaining was almost completely unknown. But the people noticed a change coming among some in their midst and they were troubled and there had not yet developed the knowledge how to reprove in these instances, nor were nor was their language to do so because like an oxen, they could not anticipate evil and the threat of dissatisfaction was not comprehended by anyone look what the fallen have done to the world and for those who dwelt upon their complaints being unsatisfied began to preside over their lives and it took the form of being unsatisfied unless they had the biggest or the best of something, or if they did not have the skill at doing something that others had. And Bad, who was some Jaza, Satan, observed all this very carefully. So pay attention. That's why I tell you, you know, you, you, you have to pay attention to the devil. A lot of people don't like to. A lot of people hate when I say that. You have to show him some sense of, uh, of respect as to how powerful he is because the devil is not stupid it sits there and says he observes us all very carefully so if you give him a crack <laughs> he's going to destroy the whole building it don't matter any crack he'll find a way to expand it and soon some wanted the satisfaction of status and the bestowal of honor. And those who felt this began to compare themselves to others in the same way as bad Satan, Sumjaza, did when he crashed into Eden. 
and it has been recorded in the Book of Remembrance of Enoch. So instead of keeping holy days where you're appreciating your family and the things that Knox said has given us, people were, they were starting to complain. And so I see a wife who was not satisfied with her husband's ability to tan leather. She chides him about it. Now, if you know what chiding is, let's, let's, get the, let's get the words now. Nag, scold, rail, complain. Yes, you know, people say that females, you know, men say that females nag. Nagging is a sin, by the way. It's, it's, a, it's a devilish sin. Okay, and look what the word nag means. Nag means to find a fault constantly. It means petty complaints. That's what nagging is. These are things that females, sisters out there, y'all got to learn how to get rid of these things. Okay. There is time, but time, mind you, okay, we are not on our individual time. We are on the most highest time. So if he wants something to pop off, lockdowns or this or that, it's going to happen which means, you know, and I said it in a song too, right? I, I, have, I write poetry and, and music. And I said, just imagine getting yourself together, but you ran out of time. You gotta be, you gotta be moving, man. You gotta be moving. Okay. So did you know that word nag goes back to the word gnaw. Now, who said that? There will be many weeping and gnashing, gnawing, okay? This is what Christ was referring to. So they're gonna be bickering and complaining in the king, uh, in, in the pits of hell. It says to gnaw. They're gonna be doing this. They're gonna be biting and gnawing on themselves. Oh, how could, how could you send me here? And you know what I did and you know, Oh, why would you send them? I know they didn't. I don't see them here. Oh. Now, think about this. It says this woman, th and understand the examples that it gives. We seeing these things throughout life. Now you have a woman who is nagging her husband, petty complaints, always finding something wrong with him. This is something that females do to this day, right? I say, oh, well, I don't like you doing this. I don't like you doing that. Or why are you dressing like that? Or you ain't gonna get into the kingdom that way. You best learn that these, these conditions and these habits that you've been so naturally following is going to naturally have you going to the fire. Okay. And it says, so I see a wife who is not satisfied with her husband's ability to tan leather. She chides him about it and cannot, was not satisfied with his wife and he wanted another. So this is also now on men wanting more than one wife. And so when the sounds of death hung over the land like a shadow and one who wanted satisfaction could not find it and the ones who wanted it to be happily attached to the circumstances of their lives found the means to do so with contentment. And this is that which divided their children so that some sought righteousness and some did not. And can you believe it? Righteousness was was based on how content people were. And it is really true, even in this world. And the angel Anaya continued and she said, bad put, who is some Jaza say, and put into the hearts of any who would listen to him. 
that happiness can only come from satisfaction of many things. And it's so crazy, right? When I think of, you know, it's no disrespect to females, but y'all, y'all know where I'm going with this. It, 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 it's been noted throughout the world that a female will, they always go off of words. And sisters, this was the first no-no. You ain't no different than Eve. In fact, you're not greater than Eve. Neither are us men greater than Adam, right? So which means if, if Eve was listening to the devil, just now understand what this word listen means, right? To listen, to hear, to attend, to obey, to hear, to listen. Someone who hears, now it, it, it gets deeper now. It says a report, a rumor, fame, glory, make famous to hear oneself called. So someone calls you over. Hey, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you for a second? How you doing? You know? Look what that word is. It goes back to listening and attention, giving attention. I always say attention is a female's kryptonite especially for the worldly women. So what do you see? They shaking something, they shaking something, they cursing at something, they, they hating kids, they killing something. Everything is done, being done for attention. And I was sitting there thinking today and I said, man, sisters, and it's no, it's no disrespect, but I truly think it's going to be very little females in the kingdom. Now hear me out. One, the females in this world, okay, of the world, not the righteous ones and not those who are seeking the most high, but everything is for attention. If they tick tocking, it's for attention. They're going out to restaurants, they want attention. They, they only fans for attention. You got women who are boarding for attention you got women fighting for abortion pills attention you got you got women who who are changing their genders of their children for attention you got women who take their children to drag story hours for attention you got women who will leave their husband who's been faithful to them for decade plus years, attention. We live in a world where the woman has received so much attention that it's destroying them and they don't even recognize it. They don't recognize it because what the world has told you, Satan has told you, you your satisfaction as a female comes through attention how people look at you how how they approach you am i not am i not lying every pagan holiday for the most part of even all religions or, or different parts of the world they're all based on making sure the woman receives something so she can receive more attention mm -hmm. Every kiss begins with K, get the jewelry. Why do you want the jewelry? More attention, right? Oh, he loves you so much. Well, if he loved you, he'd get you this. More attention, more attention, more attention, more attention, more attention. Now, it's a playbook right out of the book of Genesis. You know why? And now the world says, happy wife, happy life, correct? That's what the world tells us. Well, no disrespect to you women out there, but that's the reason we're in this place now. Because the wife was listened to over the head. So we should actually go back to what was originated 
Happy Father in the Kingdom, Happy Order, done deal. Let's not isolate anyone's feelings and let's just say, you serve the Most High, you serve the Most High, that's the bottom line. And no, you don't need to get someone to make them feel special because time is more valuable than attention. Did you hear what I just said? Time is more valuable than attention. So look at this word satisfaction, right? Satisfaction, performance by a penitent of an act of set forth by a priest. Obviously, that's not what we're looking for. It says to discharge fully, satisfying of a creditor, making amends, to satisfy. Let's look at the word satisfy. To appease, to assuage, fulfill a desire. Why is it that whenever a woman is angry at a man, he goes to satisfy her? You see how satisfaction has ruined us as a, as a people in the world, right? Oh, let me, let me, let me act mad at him so I can be satisfied. Maybe he'll get me what I want. Y'all see this in the world, don't you? Well, if I'm not, if I, if I act mad, you know, he'll look what this word satisfy means. Comply with me. He'll, he'll be on my side. I'm going to do something that's going to cause him to be on my side. To pay more attention to what I want. He's going to. Manipulation. And satisfaction go hand in hand. Look what it says to satisfy, to to make someone comply with a command. Oh, well, you hurt my feelings. Well, you know, I need to hear it. I need to. Now you have a bunch of women in the world who are what? Based on this. Look what it says. Look what it says. Bad put into Satan, put into the hearts of anyone who would listen to him that happiness only comes from satisfaction of many things. Satisfaction of dominance. You're going to listen to me. Possession. Where's your house? Where's your car? Where's your job? Recognition. Oh, no one knows you. I don't want to be with someone who's not known. Superiority. What's your position in your job? Oh, that's not good enough for me. And the triumph over others. Isn't that how females date in the world? They date based on every single thing that Satan laid out. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm wrong. Didn't it say bad observed all this very carefully and soon some wanted the satisfaction of status. Now, let, let, let's be let's keep it real. How many women would marry a man who per se, let's say he let's say he worked at a meat market. Okay. And you know, he caught a he caught an Uber or a taxi every day. A woman, if he go up to a lawyer and say, Well, man, you know, you're really beautiful. You know, I would like to take you on a date. That woman would laugh at him. Now flip it the other way around. I know y'all seen that Tyler Perry movie. They make them all those movies where the woman is in distress. The man is so successful. And oh, it's just a knight in armor. You save the woman from her living miserably. But it's never the other way around. It's because Satan has laid out the roadmap to destroy women. Now, it's the it's the playbook of Genesis. You know why? Because destroy the woman, you destroy the man. 
you destroy the woman, you destroy the children. Look at the look at the mothers up there humiliating their children, cutting their hair and cutting their clothes on social media. What? You only you only add in kerosene to that child's fire. They're gonna hate you. And and didn't the scripture say don't do anything to provoke your children? What do, you, what do you think your children gonna love you after that? After you humiliate them? I'm sorry to say it, but this is one of the reasons. These are the reasons why I say I and I'm a minister. I don't know. I, I, I don't have the mind of the most high. I am a minister. I pray and I fast, but from what we see in, in this world. For those who are, you know, extremely seeking attention, I, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how many females are going to get into the kingdom, because it's always been about a man has been told, hey, make sure you go to school, make sure you got the job. No woman wants a bum. You got to be able to take care of her, right? And then. For the females. <laughs> well, just make sure you look beautiful. Take care of yourself, right? And then you can control everything. The one who does less controls everything. And then that's how Satan Satan had it. Satan said, well, you know what? We're going to switch the roles. We're going to switch the emotions. We're going to switch everything. I see. I see. You know, there are some videos out there where women are crying, like whoever created feminism. They hate it. It's like, well, this sucks. What happens when we have family? We can't even spend time with them. Well, mm, satisfaction. But well, let's keep going. It says. And Anoxid views any who seek satisfaction of those things to be lost and groping to find their way in an effort to find their way home with him when he is their home and he is right in front of them. And he endures much sorrow because of this. Every holiday, someone is getting going through a domestic dispute. Why didn't you get me this? If you love me, you would get. Come on. Oh, you're not good enough. Oh, I want another this. I want another that. This breaks the Most High's heart. And it came to pass that out of this event of death, there was one named Emery, who in her distress went out to walk upon a mountain so she could ask Anoxid what to do. And she knew to ask because of her faith and she knew how to listen because she was familiar with the presence of the Father and the elements of creation. And we were surprised as she came to us in order to petition, Anak said. She told us about the four spirits of life. We learn this, form, this from her and the temporal world, while the council of the watchers of holiness at the edge of eternity may have known these of these four spirits. The rest of us were heavily impacted with the news to hear the view of Anoxid in the matter. And Anoxid asked us to perform a blessing for his children at the behest of one called my car. And we were very joyous to do it for him. And he asked us to consider ourselves to be the storehouse for the Holy Spirit, the storehouse for the Holy Spirit. So when the Bible calls us the temple, that means we are the storehouse for the Holy Spirit. Are you tracking? That means the Holy Spirit should fill your soul. And we are to allow the spirit of Matzah that dwells in us to flow freely to all the humble 
and repentant who earnestly seek for answers from the Lord by his spirit. And it came to pass that this was a momentous day for us that we will long remember and diligently fulfill all the course of the earth. And in council together, we all came to the determination that we would choose to respect the oneness of an oxhead with every human soul. And in this way, the treasure of housing the spirit would be spread abroad in such a way that it would be as if an oxhead only has a voice to speak to each one. So this is a time where you're supposed to be connecting even closer to the throne so that your body can be viewed as a temple so Anoxe can speak with you personally. Wow. And because Anoxet is one, he does not have to give anyone an equal share of his spirit, but each and every one may receive it all, as though they are the only one he has to speak to. And in this way, his voice to them will fit perfectly with their need to hear and the way they need to hear it. That is sought by any single person who seeks him according to his way in the midst of the multitudes of the nations. But the Decadarchy chose to be the storehouse. But the Decadarchy chose to be the storehouse. But the Decadarchy chose to be the storehouse of the satisfaction of possessions. And they chose to establish the division of bad to deny agency. Thus the spirit of evil prospered and war and racism and brokenness went rampant upon the earth before the face of Anak said, so now with this second decision, we have determined with surety that we will always be joined to the children of Anak said who love him, and we will be their constant companions, and we will be ready a ready resource as they walk among us to seek the Lord, and we will exude the spirit of the Lord which dwells in us to bless and guide them according to the will of the Lord. And we find that the fulfillment of our creation comes only in our being able to contribute to the children of Anoxid becoming holy. All right. Now I'm gonna leave y'all on a cliffhanger. Okay. But before we go, because we will tomorrow we will finish these two. These are the long ones, as you can see. I want you to sit there and really think how important this holy day is. I want you to really evaluate, am I thinking as Christ to be one with the Holy Spirit? Am I thinking as Christ? Am I allowing the Holy Spirit to dictate my thoughts or am I thinking on my own? And if the Most High talks to me, will you listen or will you deny our Father? Brothers and sisters, it's the feast of Ikar. Now I want you to, I want to bring something out a little deeper, right? The feast of Ikar.
means to dig, a farmer, a husband, right? Now watch how we spin this out in righteousness. Watch this. So if it means to dig, it says to the word dig, to make a ditch, an excavation, to stick, right? Now watch this. Form by excavation, make by digging, obtain or remove. Discover by effort or search. Okay. Have you dug out your vessel of anything dirty so that the Holy Spirit can feel comfortable in your storehouse? When the Holy Spirit comes to your vessel, is she pleased to bring her fruits or does she withhold them from you? Can the Holy Spirit store her, her seeds of righteousness in your storehouse to help another person? Are you acting as a plowman or plowwoman with the Holy Spirit? Or are you still digging out your own vessel? With that being said, brothers and sisters, until next time, we will finish the temple, and the storehouse. And I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with all her wondrous fruits and seeds of truth so that you can be called a holy storehouse. Shalom.